grapplers meet in Florida as a Miami-based Canadian, the savage Jillian Robertson, takes on California-based Brazilian baby shark Tabitha Ricci. And if you consider for Jillian Robertson riding a wave of success. Her last time out, she beat Tabitha Ricci's teammate, Piera Rodriguez, beat her by armbar. For Ricci, she beat Jessica Penny by armbar, and that's very impressive. But if you consider for Robertson, which one of these two fighters was recently on the Joe Rogan MMA show? It was the fighter with the bright red hair. So fans are going to be all over the Savage in this matchup. And how could you not? I mean, a flyweight record holder, most submissions there. And if you consider it all time in UFC history, she is right up there in terms of the submission. So if you look at it for Robertson, riding a wave, if you look at the losses that she has in that flyweight division, yeah, she has lost to Tyler Santos. Yeah, she has some losses to upper echelon competition. But if you're around the fringes of the top 15, Robertson, Robertson, well, she's been able to beat a lot of those fighters. And for Ricci, kind of the opposite thing. She comes in on short notice, fights men off Yoro, loses at flyweight, struggles with the striking, and then she goes down to strawweight, and she's really been able to pick off some of these fringe 15 fighters. Maria Oliveira, and then, of course, Pollyanna Viana before it is that win over Jessica Penny. So again, both these women accredited in jiu-jitsu. Robertson, American top team. Dean Thomas, Goat Shed Academy, Ferrici. She splits time between Paragon BJJ, where she is a jiu-jitsu instructor. We know how good she is in the gi, but she is one of those credited jiu-jitsu black belts in her own right. A national amateur Muay Thai champ in Brazil. And Ricci training at a big gym in Ruka Sport with some of the better women in this division. And I know for Robertson, she did a recent interview where she was talking to uh, David Van Elken with Fight Bananas. And the fight that Robertson's pining for after a win over Ricci is Mackenzie Dern. Tabitha Ricci trains with Mackenzie Dern too. So it seems like Tabitha Ricci's kind of been on the wall for a while. We'll see if it's only murders in the building type material for Robertson. She's able to figure out that puzzle. But Matt, when you look at a matchup like this, Robertson kind of alluded to it in that interview. The fact that the striking of Rodriguez is a lot more polished than her teammate exactly. Ricci's. And the opposite, like Rodriguez, big time boxer, not a lot of takedown defense. Ricci, good takedown defense, good wrestling, a lot of kicks. Kind of wild with the box. Well, that's the thing. If we are in, if we are in for a 15 minute striking affair between these two, it's not going to be the greatest fight of all time. I think that's fair to say. But I think we could get one of those really fun kind of scramble fest, Louis Smoke and Tim Elliott type fights because both fighters are so talented on the ground. But to me, Jillian Robertson's like Tony Allen. You remember Tony Allen? He played on the Celtics. He played Just on the playing Grizzlies. defense. But that's what Jillian Robertson reminds me of. How does every rookie start playing in most sports? They have that one thing that gets them playing time, and then they start to round out the rest of their game. For Robertson. Her striking has gotten better, don't get me wrong, but it's not the thing that's going out there and getting her a lot of wins at the highest level. It's still the offensive wrestling. It's still the great threat of submissions when she is able to get it down to the ground. But for Robertson, I wonder how far that's going to be able to carry her. Because, like you said, she's still kind of fighting those fringe top 15 fighters, where at this point in her career, she's one of the most longest tenured, like, 125ers there is in the division. You don't get those counting stats like she has with her submissions without spending a lot of time in the division. So for Robertson, it always has been a matter of what is going to be the next skill that kind of breaks through for her because the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu we know how far that's going to carry her that's why i'll be curious to see if ricci can have success off of her back because robertson's going to be difficult to take down offensively she is such a talented offensive wrestler and i do think robertson's going to be the one who will get in the top position i just don't know if ricci's going to be able to sweep her way off her back I don't know if I agree with everything you just said. I mean, Robertson has 25% takedown defense. Oh, no, it's not great UFC. numbers. But, oh, yeah, I don't but think Robertson is going to be defending a ton. But it's against decent fighters. Robertson's takedown defense kind of like Mackenzie Dern's. I mean, poor percentage-wise, but it sets up the jiu-jitsu nonetheless. If you want to take it there, she will oblige. Now, there's two fights that are outliers to that. I already referenced one, the Tyler Santos fight. I mean, she did recently lose to J.J. Aldrich, but that was a striking affair. The other loss that she has on her record, Macy Barber finished her with a knockout you see that fight against Maeda Buena Silva where it's a submission loss if you do consider it for a fighter like Jillian Robertson the Miranda Maverick fights another tough one where she got ground out on the mat and wasn't really able to get anything going and as I said in terms of the top of all-time UFC fights she's tied eighth all-time in UFC history with Alexei Olenek, Glover Teixeira, Ronnie Yaya, Joe Lozon, Cole Miller and Kenny Florian most all-time submissions was seven. So pretty cool to see that for Jillian Robertson in the UFC lore. But if you do consider this matchup, Tabitha Ricci with some of that Saiza experience over there in Japan. The MMA, the crazy rules, just like Yulia Stoyarenko. If I look at this matchup, Matt, I mean, again, 
Numbers on a page. Both women are very, very good. Robertson's going to have a big size advantage in this fight, being a former flyweight. Her last time out against Rodriguez was that move down to strawweight. And if you look at it for Robertson, this is her first pro fight in Florida since her pro debut against Hannah Goldie that she lost over with the Island Fight. So we'll see how that one plays out. Both those women train together now, so pretty interesting because Goldie's a smaller straw weight who can strike on the outside. So we'll see how this one goes, Matt. Robertson uh, coming in actually as an underdog, so that's also kind of interesting. You look at the top all votes in this one to see what the fans are thinking. I'm going to say over under 67.5% Robertson on this one. Uh, I'll say over. You're going to say over? It's it's the opposite. Six hundred thirty nine or thirty five total votes. Sixty nine percent Ricci, eighty four percent by decision for the thirty one percent that have Robertson. Sixty eight percent by submission. So who's the pick in the fight? Whoever gets on top is going to win this fight. That, that's probably who's going to win. Like if Tabitha Ricci can scramble, get on top, get a dominant position, I think she will be able to maintain it. But like you said, I think the size advantage from Robertson is going to be able to help her. If she is the one in that top position, there's a lot more energy Ricci's going to have to spend to try to get out from some of those negative spots. So ever so slightly i'm gonna go with robertson but i think we are going to get a grappling heavy fight and those are difficult to score right because we're going to get back and forth positions if it doesn't end by submission it's going to be a difficult one to judge by the time it comes down to it and robertson's one of those fighters really high guard just kind of hold one arm out there and launch some punches it's a donny brook when you're fighting jillian robertson it really is but if you do look at it for somebody like ricci at blockhouse training with sabina mazo training with molly mccann training with uh who else i mean just any big name you want to pick they are there. I, I have a hard time with the pick. I do like Jillian Robertson in the matchup with the size advantage. But again, the kicks at Arici, the fact that she can really try and drive the head into position when the fight's up against the cage. And if she can dominate in some of those spots, she could have a lot of success. The Robertson win over, it might surprise you, Maria Agapova was really telling for me because struggled a little bit with the striking and the kicks of Agapova. But when it got into some of those grappling exchanges, Robertson was able to win out. Matt Bolivis! Might be a surprise to you folks going with a Canadian and Jillian Robertson to get the win. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. Some big time matchups, including the next one. It's it's no longer the Jaguar power. We're going Tajik Tank. Wow. Loic Rajabov taking on Mateusz Rombeski. A big time one. You're going to want to keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, we always say. Let's get, get into it. it.